Hello? Can I start? Yes, bro. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Hello, good morning. Uh, good uh, evening, everyone, and good morning, maybe, in another uh, part of this world. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you, Prof. Alan and Prof. Evi, and also here is my uh, dearest uh, friends, Prof. Anne. Uh, this is so, so, uh, I'm, I'm really glad to be here again, uh, talk with the expert on material, even in uh, the energy storage and talking about the climate change. Uh, this is our my uh, good opportunity to share uh, some uh, knowledge and recent uh, progress of the Indonesia on uh, climate change. So I will share uh, my presentation. Oh, wait. Okay. Okay. Um, for today, I will uh, share you about the energy policy and the renewable energy in Indonesia, even even in a uh, small scale. But we try to penetrate the renewable energy. Um, implementation in all of the area of Indonesia. So uh, I'm also the member of uh, National Energy Council in Indonesia. It's called DEN, and uh, this is the uh, one of uh, 20 peoples only uh, appointed by the president uh, that they're focusing on the uh, energy policy. So, so we, if we take a look at the net zero emission scenario, uh, because we do the climate change, uh, climate challenge uh, workshop here, um, the government uh, already said that the, uh, the action to meet the net zero emission, it should be a start. And we know that the global commitment, we have a Paris Agreement, and then uh, there is, uh, ref they refresh the national commitment of the uh, reducing GHG emission according to the national determination contribution by uh, 2030 is 29% uh, uh, from by your own, and then 41% from the international assistance. So uh, this is quite um, optimist uh, target that uh, created by Indonesia, but we must achieve this uh, national commitment. So in the energy sector commitment, reducing GHG emission uh, by 2030 is about uh, 314,000 uh, million a ton of CO2. So um regarding to this energy sector commitment uh there is several several strategic and several analysis that now is still being debated so uh well president talk that the mitigation action will be carried out uh, from the shifting subsidy of uh, the budget uh, from fuel to productive activities there is infrastructure and also the 23 renewable energy and total national primary energy mix on 2025. And we're doing uh, waste, making uh, the waste to energy. So this is the big, uh, the big focus of the uh, mitigation action that we must uh, do in Indonesia. And this uh, commitment uh, now have uh, now every every ministry uh, take a roadmap, make a roadmap, and also making uh, analysis to how to achieve this uh, commitment. So I will share you one of the well. This is the introduction. GHG emission reduction is caused by four factor. This is the energy diversification utilization of clean coal technology and also substitute 
of the energy use from fuel to natural gas and the implementation of energy conservation uh, program. This is, would be uh, the challenge of the Indonesia to, uh, to reach up the commitment of the uh, national uh, commit target. So uh, I will. We know that the pollution in Jakarta is so big, and uh, during the COVID pandemic, we 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 know that uh, the sky in Jakarta uh, changed into the blue sky. Uh, now it's coming back again to to this sky. So uh, we we realize that we need the good air uh, in Jakarta, not only in Jakarta, but in, in all over the Indonesia, but the highest is in Jakarta. So according to the analysis of the pollution, the Jakarta is uh, the worst one. So um, if we take a look for the energy outlook calculated by a uh, program in, in especially in BPPT and my team, uh, we calculated that uh, the most the most uh, sector that will be the main uh, contribution of the uh, emission is on the are on the uh, transportation and industry. So um, according to this uh, sector, we must uh, reduce the emission even in transportation and also in industrial. The other one, the household and commercials, others is not only uh, not really a uh, hike, but we concentrated to the transportation and industry. And uh, you know that the Indonesia, we have PLN. PLN is national state owned company that uh, dominated rule in electricity. So uh, PLN also uh, have the new roadmap uh, according to the uh, decarbonization uh, system they want to try to add to add some renewable energy in in the uh, electricity supply so uh, now i will share you about the uh, its gov its uh, ministry uh, is calculated and have their own scenario you will know that uh, many ministry of the Indonesia now is uh, uh, being debated. So I will share you about the Bapanas. Bapanas is national planning agency, and they have four scenario to meet the net zero emission. Uh, the first one, the first scenario is in 2045. The second is 2050. And the third is 2060, and the the last one is 2070. The energy, uh, the energy, uh, the Ministry of uh, Energy said they will uh, set up the target on 2070. But uh, National uh, Planning Agency, uh, they have four scenario that now is being calculated, recalculated again. Um, the differences, the difference in uh, with the uh, Ministry of uh, Environment and Forestry, they also uh, setting the uh, net zero emission target is on 2070, but they have a sectoral and prefecture pathway. So this is would be a new uh, strategy in Indonesia, post uh, prefecture and uh, the sector. Uh, would be the would be have its own uh, target like in the us you know that california and then uh, washington dc different from the texas they have their own uh, target of the em reducing emission which is the uh, california is the highest one yeah so in uh, and we calculated uh, the ministry of environment forestry is calculated that picking emission is the most uh, high one uh, is on the 2030, whereas the the energy mix in in this uh, year coal is still uh, still have the 
have a big share of the uh, percentage of the uh, mix at here. Coal is still 39, gas is 12, oil is uh, 17, and renewable is uh, 32. So uh, Indonesia have a 100 years anniversary on 2045. So many of the uh, strategy uh, also setting up this this 2045 year is a is a specific one. Well, this is the plan of the uh, Ministry of Environment and Forestry. So, how about the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Resources? They have also a different perspective. So, uh, but they still setting the net zero emission on 2070. Yeah. If we can look at this uh, uh, picture, uh, they setting they have uh, even one and two scenario. If we uh, have 2070 uh, and net zero emission. So what will uh, we must do on this scenario one? Is a steam power plant and gas uh, and gas and steam uh, power plant retired according to the age. So this is uh, we predict that steam power plant retired on 2058. Gas and steam power plant retired on 2054. And there is no additional steam power plant. Yeah, this is a uh, it's much a big challenge to uh, to stop the steam power plant, except those that have been constructed and under construction. So if we still need under construction now, uh, we cannot stop it. But the additional uh, steam power plant, uh, there is no no room anymore. So the third one is no additional fossil generation generator after 2030. And uh, if we're talking about the nuclear power plant, uh, they're setting the uh, 2040, start from the 2040. So uh, with the second scenario, second scenario is uh, more, more um, not, not really, not really, uh, uh, not really tight, but they emphasizing the uh, contribution of the uh, gas. Yeah, even this is uh, they they counted the contribution of the gas is uh, much more big than a renewable energy in this uh, in this uh, a scenario in scenario one. So the difference is is the additional fossil uh, generator can be added, but only with a carbon, carbon capture uh, storage. But we must count it this, uh, the in, in, uh, investment. I think uh, I will talk to the uh, energy uh, ministry. Then we can uh, talk about the budget of this. Uh, because carbon capture storage in an abundant way is a, a very big investment also. So uh, we know that uh, the government sector uh, setting the 2070 uh, target, but uh, the association, the public opinion want to, uh, want to more uh, government, it should be more aggressive uh, with the with this uh, climate crisis, so why we cannot achieve before 2070? Uh, they also preparing uh, the public opinion, especially from Institute of Essential Service Reform. They preparing the long term strategy toward being carbon neutral by 2050. So uh, this is uh, still being uh, calculated also. Um, well. Uh, because I'm doing the uh, sector of the research and and uh, the implementation of the research and the innovation, uh, we thinking about how we can achieve 
the uh, net zero emission or we can reduce the uh, carbon and uh, take, a, take a look for the uh, decarbonization. Uh, we have an, some several opinion of the uh, for the government. So one is the Indonesia uh, push down the uh, CO2 emission from the transportation uh, using the EV or fuel cell vehicle, and uh, uh, there there are must be a power generation contribution from the renewable energy and. Uh, the carbon capture uh, industry should have the carbon capture. So it's uh, related with the uh, Ministry of Energy strategy. Yeah. And uh, now it's uh, under the, under the uh, progressive uh, implementation. Indonesia have a biodiesel B30 program, and then we have also methanol production plan is a big one in the East Indonesia in Papua. Uh, island and uh, there is a uh, big growth of the chemical industry also and uh, our opinion also stop build uh, the new coal power generation in 2025 this is uh, related also with the uh, ministry of energy scenario so uh, the national energy council uh, also uh, asking the government to have an action plan of the Indonesia net zero emission. So we have already biodiesel program. We doing the uh, start with the B5, B10, B20, and now it's B30. We want to uh, accelerate this, uh, this uh, contribution, uh, could achieve B50 or even uh, B100, D100 and et cetera. And uh, co-firing, the next one is co-firing uh, on the existing steam power plant. This is uh, must be done in, in now existing power plant. We suggest to uh, national state-owned company uh, electricity, it's PLN. So we suggest also uh, with the uh, Pertamina, it's national state-owned company of fuel, uh, they uh, must do the refuse derived fuel or even they uh, produce any other fuel from bio. And also this is uh, the new renewable energy, uh, but basically on, on biomass, we do biofuel, biogas, briquette. This uh, we suggest also to uh, national state owned company of uh, oil, it's Pertamina. And also uh, we do agree with the uh, government uh, scenario that uh, steam power plant uh, should be stopped by uh, 20, start from 2025 until 2045 and total 53 uh, gigawatt. So uh, what, what is the challenge and opportunity of renewable energy in Indonesia? Um, if we take a look, uh, Indonesia is, uh, according to the political will and partially um, the research sector of, uh, and also the industrial sector, uh, we must consider about the market demo, demo, domination also and infrastructure and the technology and also investment challenge. So uh, we setting up the target of the net zero emission, but we must calculate it how Indonesia people can pay for the uh, electricity itself. So uh, the income per capita also cal should be cal calculated. And we know that the pandemic is still uh, not, not finished. Uh, so so uh, this is a difficult, uh, difficult calculation that we must uh, have a foresight for the uh, economy also. So, um, uh, I will talk about the uh, our challenge and uh, do what we do in our uh, research institute. Um, we do some of uh, these several uh, topics. I will share you shortly, uh, but mainly main is uh, we doing the research and we doing uh, the innovation to support the uh, net zero emission. One is biofuel, second is biogas. 
we need also the energy plantation scenario and uh, also we we have abundance of uh, geothermal and uh, talking about the smart energy uh, smart grid and renewable energy park and then we also doing the electric vehicle we contribute to the consortium and uh, we now uh, start with the development of the green hydrogen so uh, if we talk about the uh, uh, the progress of of our uh, research uh, in the field of uh, fuel uh, especially for green uh, fuel uh, this is i i i mentioned the uh, map of the indonesia so we doing we do the innovation in many uh, area from Riau, this is uh, Sumatra, we're doing the biogas. And then uh, we also doing the energy plantation uh, feasibility study in, in Riau also at here, at here in, in Sumatra. Then, uh, well, we, because our research institute located at uh, uh, Jakarta, uh, we do the advanced uh, bio uh, biofuel development at here mainly uh, even for a uh, biodiesel and bio crude oil plant from from biomass and then we also doing the catalytic cracking from the gasoline for to substitute, substitute the gasoline and uh, we also doing the clean coal technology uh, to make a coal upgrading and uh, also the design of the uh, coal gasification. Uh, change to the uh, Kalimantan. This is Kalimantan Island. Uh, we do, we convert the waste oil to fuel, but uh, we have a collaboration to uh, Japanese industry at here at, uh, at um, Tarak, not, not Tarakan, but uh, Kalimantan, uh, Balikpapan, sorry. Balikpapan is, uh, uh, there is so many with uh, oil from the industry because Balikpapan is the uh, the uh, they have a big uh, reactor from uh, Pertamina. Then uh, change to the others uh, island. Uh, we accelerate the uh, B30 and B50 uh, program to escort the transportation and distribution. We, we even going to the east of the Indonesia part here because they uh, they have a problem on the distribution of the B30. So we do the analyzing and we do the roadshow of the uh, B50 program uh, in, in even in Sulawesi and also in Timor. And uh, the you know, Papua Island is located at here, the most, uh, the eastest in Indonesia. Uh, we have a feasibility study of the energy plantation to uh, to make a green fuel because we lack of the raw materials of uh, if we're doing the green fuel. So we talk, we suggest the, the government to have the energy plantation as a national agenda. Uh, this is the detail. I, I will share you just a picture uh, what we do on the biogas uh, power plant in, in Rio because they have so many palm oil mill effluent. We do the cover lagoon uh, technology, but in the several uh, locations, we have a new patented uh, with the circulation of the uh, palm oil mill effluent that we, ca we can accelerate the production of the gas. So. Uh, just in four hours, we we can make a huge uh, cover lagoon. The conventional one need one, uh, one or two days to accelerate the gas. But if we uh, have a good circulation in inside the lagoon, so uh, the gas would be produced more that we are patented now. And, and this uh, system, we deliver to uh, national state-owned company of uh, Palm uh, Kernel Industry in Tandun, in Rio. And uh, we setting up also the engine 
uh, to convert the gas to the electricity, we setting up gas engine and uh, the electricity is generated. And this is uh, utilized for the uh, 1,500 families uh, from here. This is, this is the last ministry of um, a science and technology uh, that come to this, to this uh, facility. Um, now we are also, uh, this is still development, but, uh, but already, uh, already success to do the co-firing. Uh, different from the cover lagoon, this is a new, a new uh, strategy to make uh, biogas from palm oil mill effluent with the uh, reactor. It's uh, called CSTR, yeah. CSTR is a circulated uh, steering uh, method to make a gas at here. Not, uh, not for the calculate uh, circover lagoon, but with the reactor. So we can, uh, we can achieve the potential of the application of bio CNG on for uh, LPG transportation and substitution. This is located also at uh, Rio, uh, yeah, uh, two or, or, or five kilometers far away from the first one. Uh, I will talk about the uh, bio energy uh, technology innovation, not biogas, I'm moving to the uh, bio energy innovation. Um, we doing- I'm sorry, Prof. Enya, you have five minutes left. Okay, we're making the syngas and uh, from the biomass, this is uh, the generator at our uh, facility. And uh, because the mandatory of the B30 is, uh, is everywhere, so BPPT have an expert to, to controlling the application of the B30 in every sector, even mining, train, ship, defense, and something. Okay, um, uh, this is also the same. So um, this is the energy plantation of the 50 uh, million uh, hectares of the, uh, on the east of Indonesia, um, but still uh, under uh, communication with the energy ministry of energy um, because uh, Indonesia president is now campaign to fully really own on uh, biofuel as, as the one in uh, Brazil. So if we doing if we do the 50 million uh, plantation, so we can get uh, the production of the uh, CPO 60 million ton per year, and then we provide a living for uh, 24 million people, and also CA2 emission from burning green fuel is uh, will be absorbed by energy plantation. Uh, so we're doing the circular economy here. Uh, talking about the electricity, and this is the last five minutes that I want to uh, talk. Uh, the electricity, we have also uh, several projects uh, on Indonesia, in, in Jakarta also, and uh, in, in East Indonesia, the easiest one is uh, Sumba, and then uh, we have a geothermal in Lahendong. Well, I will talk, I will talk to you shortly. Um, geothermal uh, have really uh, a good opportunity to accelerate the uh, contribution on the new and renewable energy. We have two plans. So we collaborate this uh, with the with the IZ uh, Germany uh, that we together built the binary cycle of uh, geothermal uh, system. Uh, the size is 500 uh, kilowatt at Lahendong. And then we also doing by our uh, national a company in Indonesia, we, we creating the three megawatt of uh, geothermal. This is located at Kamojang. And uh, look at this, uh, we have uh, several consortium at here that uh, we, that national state owned company also supporting uh, this project. Uh, talking about the smart grid, uh, if talking about the, the uh, photovoltaic. Uh, we have a system configuration of the smart grid in, in Serpong. 
This is uh, located near Jakarta. So um, we have many uh, monitoring system of rooftop PV and also control, also power back, uh, many simulation. And we also deliver this uh, electricity produced from the rooftop from 100 kilowatt of rooftop of PV, uh, we deliver to the electric uh, vehicle. So this is one of the example of the smart grid that located at uh, Sumba. Uh, we have uh, we have a 700 uh, kilowatt peak of uh, photovoltaic, and you know uh, the photovoltaic electricity is intermittent, so we need to stabilizing this using the battery. And uh, we succeed to, to make uh, a long life of the battery uh, at least twice, uh, twice more longer uh, than usual, uh, the using of the battery. Uh, okay. uh, the last is uh, the smart grid uh, facility also in, in uh, Baron is located at Yogyakarta. This is combined with the tourism uh, tourism uh, area, uh, we put the fuel cells, we put the uh, photovoltaic and we doing the uh, training for the uh, student and also we doing techno cam at, at this facility. Uh, so this is a very good uh, location to take a look and uh, I welcome also all of the student at here for free. Yeah. So uh, I think I will not talking about the electric vehicle right now, but I will uh, just share the uh, the development of the uh, hydrogen uh, vehicle at Indonesia, especially at BPPT. Uh, the last minute, okay? Uh, you can uh, see that uh, our motorcycle of uh, the hydrogen uh, is still runway, it still can operate if. Even we already setting up the fuel cells uh, 10 years ago. So uh, this is uh, a good example that we uh, create uh, and developing uh, this electric vehicle with the student and still running. This is a very fortune for us. Um, so the, uh, the others is uh, the motor. Yeah, uh, the four wheel of uh, the the application of the uh, fuel cells in 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 small small vehicle yeah it's a small car uh, but we try to make a system of the fuel cells so uh, I think it's uh, already uh, I have no time again but. Um, I will stop my share, but in, in the last one, I will share you and, and want to help, want, want to asking a help because uh, now we are creating the system of the recycling battery. So uh, I, know, I know Professor Effie is uh, the lead coordinator for the battery. So uh, I will ask for uh, a help and a contribution and collaboration uh, for together, be, together doing the uh, recycling uh, battery because we have a uh, we have a uh, design of the uh, guys uh, in in BPPT they they have a, a capability to design the the uh, the industry but we want to match up with the uh, battery battery uh, research even in Indonesia or even in the world uh, because at now. If Indonesia going up with the electric vehicle implementation, there are abundance of the uh, battery will be uh, will be on in in Indonesia, and we have no no even one even one location to do the recycle of the battery. So we just asking now we collaborate with uh, the University of Gajah Mada, uh, but I want more the collaboration. We have. Uh, because there is a uh, much type of the battery will, would come if we accelerate the EV. So now uh, still uh, the feasibility study, we're doing the uh, design of the pilot plan, but I'm not sure what my staff doing. Uh, is this 
the most optimum one to do the recycling of the battery. So uh, I, I want to uh, ask the Institute of Battery at, at here to help uh, us and to thinking this uh, together. Well, we know that hydrometallurgy process is uh, abundant. If we're doing what's just one battery, we'll do one process on, or we can create an optimum process and we can recycling all the type of the battery. So this is uh, the last time uh, I talk about the, uh, the battery and asking you some help. Uh, thank you. Thank you for uh, listening to, to my talk. Thank you, Professor Enia, for such a fruitful presentation. And now I will give the floor to the audience who have a question. So I have a I have a question. Um, you mentioned briefly a roadmap towards recycling of batteries. I think that's uh, is probably the biggest challenge when it comes to batteries. Everybody predicts an exponential growth of battery materials in the next twenty years, and um. It isn't clear with current battery technologies how we can recycle them. That's a very accelerated uh, roadmap that you have there. <laughs> yeah. I was just wondering if you could comment in a little bit more detail about about how we might um, how we might improve recyclability, sure how we might improve recyclability a little bit. Um, well, uh, well, I'm, I'm not knowing that yet, but uh, we, we do design what um, we still lack of the information of the, uh, the process inside the recycling battery. We just only want information from the University of Gajah Mada now uh, mm. for doing the recycling battery of lithium that's uh, I'm asking also with the uh, the process. How can we uh, make some uh, short will be a good design for the industry, and then we can uh, overcome with this uh, battery recycling. But that, that's why I asking you, Prof. Alan, to <laughs> to help us. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to. I mean, that's fantastic. I'm not really a recycling person, actually. <laughs> I'm a new materials person. Well, I, really appreciate I will really appreciate it because this is a biggest task for us. Yeah. I mean, what I don't want to see is uh, what's happened with electronics or plastics. I mean, uh, electronics less so in Indonesia, but if you've ever been to certain areas af of Africa, then there are just entire mountains of electronics yes. um, that have just been left there all of the expensive components or materials like gold have been stripped and yes. then everything else that's toxic is just left yes. In, yes. A, in a mountain mm -hmm. and you know plastic there's so much plastic in our water i mean it, it, plastic is everywhere in indonesia i've been there many times and why, why are we not recycling that? Now I look at batteries and I think the same is going to happen. We, we have this exponential growth of batteries that we've seen the graph yesterday, I believe. And it makes me worried that there will be just a mountain of batteries somewhere in some country that some country, nobody yeah. really goes to. I, I think the way that we have to do it is make them environmentally benign in the first place. I, th I think... We, we need to, making them so that they are good for the environment, or at least they're not bad for the environment, in the first place, there's, you know, ecological by design, I think that's the way to do it. And now is probably the time. Everybody's buying lithium batteries. Lithium is, will run out. So I think we have to, by design, the next generation battery needs to be recyclable oh, by design. 
So we will let the lithium battery recycling now be sent to China, right? Mostly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, lithium will run out and mm -hmm. there probably will be a market for extracting lithium from old lithium batteries and then reprocessing it into new ones. I don't know what will happen to the rest of the cell, mm -hmm. but the, the, it, it worries me. I think we have to move away from lithium. And I think, therefore, we need to be thinking about environmentally benign materials mm -hmm. and, 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 what, and materials that are everywhere, um, very common ones. So it's, tr it's tricky, yeah. interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so you, do you think that uh, we must consider about the, the next uh, battery, not the lithium recycling, right? I think I think the lithium. I think we're too late with the lithium batteries to consider yeah. making them uh, environmentally benign by design. Mm -hmm. I think it's too late for that. I think that, as as people say in my country, the horse has bolted the stable. You know, so that the, there are too many batteries being produced. The production lines. I mean, Indonesia is building a gigafactory for lithium batteries yeah. using a design that fundamentally isn't recyclable i mean it i i think the i think the horse has bolted i think uh we need to be concentrating on the the technology after lithium mm -hmm. okay. but that's my personal opinion i mean yeah. i'm sure other people will have a different opinion <laughs> <laughs> yeah thank you Alan. no thank you thank you i i ought to let others be able to talk i don't want to dominate things <laughs> Is there any other question from the audience, please? Prof. Enya. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's quite interesting, oh. your, uh, your presentation. I think regarding to the, the recycles, my students, I think my students work together with uh, Pak Jarot. Oh, Pak yeah. Jarot, yeah. Uh, he is doing a, a bachelor, uh, bachelor, uh, bachelor thesis. Uh, with the uh, recycling oh, of okay. NMC. First of all, oh, NMC, yes. yes, the material. First of all, we have to separate between anode and the cathode. Mm -hmm. Then we peel, it, we, we peel it out, the material from the anode, the cathode, the mix, and then we use the floating method. Okay. So uh, first of all, we can, we, can, uh, we can separate between those materials. At the end, we want to do the hydrometallurgy to extract these materials to make uh, its element. Because we have lithium, yeah. we have nickel, we have manganese, yeah. we have cobalt. So yeah, at the moment, we have already done the, uh, the separation between anode and cathode. Then we oh, okay. did it and then uh, we success for this. And then the next, we want to do the hydrometallurgy process in order to extract these cathode mm -hmm. materials to be you know, each element of these materials. And if this succeeds, so we can make this material as a raw material to make another cathode. Okay. Oh, so okay. I think we have already the report. So this morning, we mm -hmm. have already the, uh, the examiner of my students with Pak Jarod. So I think we have some uh, topics. Uh, I mean, uh, uh -huh. the topics from BPPT has been done all. Uh, by my students. Okay. Oh, that's a good uh, idea, Prof. I don't know whether yeah. you 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 um, you know about this or not. No, but no, actually, not really. you know, I, I just know that we talk with the uh, University of Gajah Mada, not yet with Prof. Anna. <laughs> uh, so, but actually, yeah. since last year, we already discussed about this. Prof. Oh. Jarod and uh, pa Masmi, they yeah. came yeah. to the university with the, their team. Then we discussed yeah. about some uh, some uh, reality topic of your, uh, oh. your presentation. So, so we, we can start the design of the uh, the whole process yeah, with, with the small scale of... Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So we, we, we have done the separation of the cathode and the nut okay. method. We can use the uh, floating uh, method. But yeah. at yeah. the end, we want to... Uh, uh, do another uh, another research is a hydrometallic process in order to extract of these materials become individual materials. Yes, it become pure materials. Okay. So actually, okay. this is a part of your project, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, that's it. That's a big roadmap for. for yeah. Us. <laughs> 
Okay. We'll continue. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Actually, uh, we have so many kind of project. Yeah. I think hydrogen power is quite uh, promising. I think. Oh, the hydrogen sure. power. Oh yeah. It's yeah. promising because in Japan, uh, they, they use more hydrogen power rather than the lithium ion battery, right? Mm. Because when oh, I visited yeah. Japan, oh, yeah. uh, my, my professor there, uh, he said that the next energy is hydrogen power. Yes, yes. I skipped my talk of the hydro hydrogen uh, for today <laughs> because the last one I have talked about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I agree. And, and we do accelerating also the program of the green hydrogen. Uh, yes, it is. Yes. Fuel cells also uh, to doing the uh, even uh, fuel cell itself or, or converted to the electrolyzer, the PEM electrolyzer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To produce green yeah. hydrogen. Yeah. This is also promising for the yeah. fuel cell as well. Yeah. Thank you, Prof. Anna. Thank you, Prof. Anna. Yeah. It's oh, yeah. nice presentation. Prof. Anna. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Subhan, yeah, I, I, uh, Prof. Ania, thank you for your uh, inspiring lecture. Yes, really a uh, great talk. Uh, I just want to mention that uh, one uh, of the theme of the uh, for recycling, uh, battery recycling, it is under the work breakdown structure the, in the national research priority where I coordinate the work breakdown yes, structure. I, so, I said, yeah. Really my Jarod uh, is there, and then also yes. Lippi. So we will make this uh, Lily line. Uh, it should be a line production and line of the research. There, so from uh, not overlapping to each other. So that is the. So we, of course, that as you mentioned, that we can work together. Yes, and then uh, even one of uh, the team for making the nickel uh, ore to become MHP in Ciampea, Pak Hafiz, Mr. Hafiz. Also, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, in that uh, line, yeah. So it is, uh, yeah. Maybe sometime we, we discuss uh, in more detail, yeah, with BPPT. Okay, yeah. sure, sure, Prof. Thank you.